What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Fair Geek. And today, I'm reviewing the video by The Tribe Report. They have a very good episode on why marriage is not worth it for men. And guys, this is very, very powerful. Let's get into the video. So moving on, we had a, uh, a commenter under one of our videos. I don't see his name because I screenshotted it, but he wrote, when I went through the family court system, my ex-wife went to court and said I was abusive. No evidence was needed. Her word was taken as fact, and she was given a 15-day protective order that said I could not go near her or our kids. So for 15 days, I was, no, I was not allowed to see or speak to our children. When court came, I proved no wrongdoing. Proved that she lied and did she get in trouble for her deceit? No. Instead, they said, have a nice day. Hope everything works out for you. So women can flat out lie and no consequences happen while the man gets his life turned over. Later years passed by. I again proved in court that my relationship with our children deteriorated solely based because the mother was manipulating our child. The judge said out loud, looking me in the eyes for all to see. I know your relationship with your child is non-existent because of the mother, and I am sorry. I hereby order the child remain with the mother for another six months. Wow. And again, guys, check this channel out, Tire Report. They have some really, really excellent information. I believe it's a husband and wife team, if I'm not mistaken. But they're a really excellent show. Let them know that O'Shea Duke Jackson sent you first kind of pin to the top. That's amazing. The judge knows that the mother is lying. He even apologizes for it. And he says, I hereby allow the kid to stay with the mother for another six months after understanding that she has lied. And you know what? So many men go through this in America every day. Canada, Britain, it doesn't matter if you're white, if you're black, whatever the color is. Every man understands what this is about. Let's go. So I won and proved in court I harbored no ill will while the mom did everything to try and destroy me, yet knowing that it still went in her favor. Yet knowing that it still went in her favor. This is nothing compared to what happens to many men across the country. So men have seen other men getting the shaft with no lube and saying to themselves, you know what? I think I'm going to pass on that marriage thing, which clearly is financial suicide when divorce happens. No, I'm not saying men shouldn't marry. I will be married again someday. There will be two requirements, though. Prenup, and I'm not having any children. This is for my protection and sanity. Yeah, we did a support court reaction um, just recently, too. That'll come out in the next uh, couple of days, if it doesn't, tomorrow. And stories like this are supremely common. <laughs> Scary, almost. Uh, or maybe it's just the lens of, you know, those being the worst ones. So you hear about them. But to me, it's one too many for to to just uh, throw away the notion that this isn't common. You know, I could say, well, maybe that guy got the shaft, but you can't because I've heard it too many times. That is absolutely true. You, you can't deny that this happens all the time. Every day you hear this stuff all the time. It's not like, oh, OK. Well, you know, that's just a kind of a freaking nature thing. No, this shit happens every fucking day. And the tragedy is how bad some of the stories are. One guy got cancer, went through chemotherapy. Another guy, we read about what got in a car accident. Woman left him. <laughs> and in a couple of months, she didn't even wait a year, just like bounced. Yeah, it's... um. How much does this go down to people just being a mismatch from the get-go? That's what I ask myself, you know, because we t once you're at divorce, that's like the end of the road. Some, right. The majority of couples are going to be separated even before they're divorced. Like right. divorce is just signing the paper. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, basically the question is how do you, one, choose the right partner, two, create a good relationship and three maintain a right. good relationship right you know because it's uh takes two to tango and 
If you want to blame the guy and be like, well, he should have vetted better. He should have picked his woman better. He should have done it. I don't but, think it's one person's fault ever. Oh, right. I agree. Of Let me kind of talk about this. Um, here's something that we don't talk about when you, we deal with relationships or friends, family members. People change. People change, man. Um, I'm 41. I came to Europe when I was 34. I'm not the same exact person that I was seven years ago. I see the world completely different now than I did. And then from, you know, when I was 34, I was a lot different than when I was 24. So imagine you get with somebody, you're on the same page when you're both 21. But when you're 41, you might see that you're two different people. And I used to always have the same thing too about vetting somebody. Yeah, at the time you're betting the person that it's a it's a good fit. Like even look at basketball teams. Like look at Tyreek Hill for Kansas City Chiefs. Put him up there. He was a great fit. They vetted him. It was a great draft pick. He was a good pick for the Kansas City Chiefs in that system at the time. But not so much anymore, which is why he got traded. Some people they run its course. At the time, it's the right pick. It's the right situation. And then people change, needs change, relationships change. And that's something that you can never account for because you're never going to know how people change in relationships, friendships, whatever. Of course, but I think um, in general, if you wanted to place the blame on the man, at least for this point, I mean, both people are to blame, but I'm just saying, what could have the man done? Well, you should have picked a better woman. Well, you know, this and that. Well, it's like, okay, some of these guys we read about that were raised in this feminized household that never got the tools right. to pick so correctly true. in the right. first place. So not Absolutely true. Many men don't have any expectations of what women should do for them or how they should act. They just, we should get a wife and we should serve her and that should be it. But not understanding what your needs are. He's right. Nowadays, men sometimes don't know how to be men mm -hmm. sometimes they don't have an example of a man in their household same for women they get coddled and then don't have an example of a man mm -hmm. so don't know how to deal with a man they're not a pick a man either right um and then maybe raised by a single mother that puts you know these feminist ideas into their mind so when they are dating they're projecting this trauma or these ideas into their relationship and then on top of that, you add, you add that the system, you know, is for profit. It's not mm -hmm. for the benefit of the families. So you can't really say it's men or it's women. Both. It's a multi-layered problem. Both and the government involved. Yeah, the issue stems from the very beginning, right? When these two people met, what were the circumstances in each of their lives to where they truly, quote, settled down you know that's a very poisonous word to be getting into a marriage with saying i settled for her i settled for him that's almost signing the the death wish on it right there because or, go mm, ahead please finish oh because um the mentality is just poisoned from the beginning i settled which means i'm in a superior position because i could have done better but my circumstances weren't at the at their best in this moment so i'm going to choose a partner lesser than me that i believe is not as valuable as i could get and you're and you're just like oh yeah let's get married because taxes and you know money because the court the the government's involved so for some people getting married is saving money from the system um, others want to have kids and then collect from the system Combine finances. That's a cool idea. Two people working together can now have what neither could have separately. You know, but is that really ideal when the partner you're going to sign your life commitment to isn't the one you would have picked as your first choice? Oh, let me bring up another point. What if it <laughs> is the partner you wanted and you feel all the butterflies in your tummy, but that's not the best person for you? So really, mm. what is the best criteria to choose a partner? For me, I think it's shared values. Mm. Firstly, knowing yourself, knowing what's important to you, your life. Mm -hmm. What are you not willing to compromise on? And I think a lot of us skip that step, especially a lot of us start dating very young. A lot of people get married like in their 20s. How Nowadays? sure? 
Hmm? I, I think that's, that's an excellent point. What are your shared values? What did this person see coming up? Okay. A lot of times values can be, it's the religion you're in, it's the socioeconomic background you're in, it includes education, it includes work ethic, it includes um, where you are on top of the economic food chain, it includes, you know, your commitment to family. All of these things are so important in dealing with mates. And sometimes you find people that are unequally yoked. But at the end of the day, it's very risky for men to get married today in today's world because what do you get from the marriage? Maybe if everything goes right, you probably can get something. But the, the fact is, is that if you divorce, you lose everything. So what you may gain in marriage is not as dr drastically, you know, as great as what you can lose in many cases. And that's the problem fundamentally we're having today. But guys, what do you think? With O'Shea Duke Jackson, back in another episode of Fair Use. I really appreciate you guys for all that you do. Shout out to Gary on the ones and twos. Quavy's on the edits, and we're out.